Right now to Chicago, that's where we find Judge Surratt making his rundown debut. We've talked a lot this year about Adam Dunn and how great he has been. The question is, why has he been so good? Well, Matt, I think one of the reasons is that he actually feels like he is back to normal. That was the conversation that Adam Dunn and I had at Wrigley Field earlier uh, in the season during interleague play between the Cubs and the White Sox, and the numbers certainly reflect that. The numbers that he's acquired during his career on that baseball card do not lie. And if you look at what he's done this year, first in the American League with 23 homers, third with 52 RBIs, first in walks. I think it took him a little bit longer than he expected to adjust to being a full-time designated hitter he also said he took a few extra swings during the winter, and that certainly has translated to a lot of his success this year. But the White Sox offense has been prolific because of what Adam Dunn has done. And uh, Paul Carrico, they got some terrific performances surrounding those guys. Now Dunn and the White Sox will be facing Matt Garza tonight here at the cell. And obviously a lot of rumors surrounding Matt Garza, Ryan Dempster. I had a chance to talk with Theo Epstein over the weekend about what the hopes, what the Cubs hope to acquire if they choose to deal Garza and or Dempster before the deadline. All right, we look forward to that. Judge Surratt making his rundown debut from Chicago. We'll check in later on on the show. We are moving on. We now move on to Chicago, where it's the Cubs and the White Sox playing at U.S. Cellular. And uh, Judge Surratt joins us once again. Uh, Phil Rogers talked to us a few minutes ago, Judd, and talked about how he's not exactly sure when Dempster may be moved. But from the Cubs' end, what do they need to get back if they're going to move him or going to move Garza at all? Well, Matt, when I talk with Theo Epstein over the weekend, I think what they'd like to do is if they're going to make trades off their big league roster, what they want to get guys who are going to be impact players or who project to be impact players once they get to the big league level. Look at what they've tried to do this season, not only with the draft, but also with the, the Solaire signing, which is going to be official here in the coming days. What they're trying to do is stockpile as much young talent guys with multiple tools and their feeling is if they can just acquire quantity that'll give them a better, better chance to hit on multiple players going forward but that's what they're looking for impact players or guys who project to be that way when they reach the big league level well you know right now the Cubs have multiple issues you know that as well as anybody what is considered their greatest weakness right now well, I don't think there's any question about it. It's been the bullpen. I think that that was definitely the case uh, during this last homestand against the Tigers and the Red Sox, where they had a difficult time if they were in the lead, keeping the game close, or if they were slightly behind, keeping the game still in check. They were unable to do that. If you want to go all the way back to the offseason, they made their deals out of the bullpen. They traded Andrew Kashner to get Rizzo. They traded Sean Marshall to the Reds. Those guys haven't been replaced. And then at the back end of the bullpen, you expected that uh, the back end would be featuring Carlos Marmel and Kerry Wood. Marmel lost his job. He's just now getting back to it. Kerry Wood retired. Uh, they've gotten commendable work out of Sean Camp and James Russell, but a lot of these guys are pitching in roles that they are not necessary, necessarily familiar, and it's made it a difficult job for Dale Swain. Let's talk about the shortstop here for a second. As much talent as anybody in Major League Baseball, but Starlin Castro has fits of whether it be vapor locks or brain freezes. What are we watching? It's been tough to watch a number of times this month. Well, I think you're still seeing a 22-year-old player. I think that's what you're looking at primarily, and this is somewhat of what he experienced last year, but I think you always have to look through the lens of Starlin Castro right now through his age, and he's still a young player. When I talked with Starlin uh, during the team's last road trip, he felt like he was being overly aggressive, swinging at some bad pitches. The Cubs have just recently changed hitting coaches. They don't mind that he's aggressive. What they want him to do is to be more selective when he's at the plate. All right, Judd, when we get back to you, this is going to be a fun one later on. Which team should the White Sox fear most? We'll get to that later on in the show. Off to Wrigley Field, where there has to be excitement. Mets and Cubs and Judd Surratt standing by Anthony Rizzo. Back in the majors in a Cubs uniform. Talk to me about the buzz surrounding him and this ballpark and what's going on there. Well, Lauren, I saw there was a tweet that came out that actually when Anthony Rizzo arrived in the parking lot here in Wrigley Field, this is easily the most highly touted prospect to come through the north side since probably Corey Patterson or maybe Mark Pryor. But Dale Swain, the rest of the Cubs organization, they wanted to stress you are not here to be a savior for an offense that's really been challenged scoring runs this season. What they want to try and do, and I talked to Jeff Samarja about this yesterday, they want him to come in here and be comfortable. The Cubs are going to watch how he handles expectations, how he handles the pressure, how he handles the media, and if he's able to get comfortable then at that point they feel like that his talent will come through we'll get an opportunity to see that tonight against Dylan G and the Mets but in addition to Rizzo Ryan Dempster should be back on the Cubs roster very soon all right we'll get an update on him later in the rundown thanks ahead on the rundown